Hi there, welcome to my Linux basics tutorial in which I'm going to cover how to handle the, the terminal in Linux, the command line interface or whatever you want to call it and I'm going to show you the basic um, shell commands that you need to know to find your way around this terminal stuff. Um, first thing I'm going to show in this video is um, how to handle files, how to list files, how to create files, how to remove files or delete files, how to create directories and f or folders and yeah now that that'll be the first part of this tutorial. So I assume you know how to um, open a terminal because I well, I think you have seen one, because uh, I guess that's the reason why you're watching this video. <coughs> so let's uh, have a start. First thing we need to know is how to list files in the folder you're currently in. Well, or maybe before that, um, when you have a terminal session open, this is always associated with a current working directory. Maybe we start with this one. Um, you can find out which directory you're in currently is by the pwd command and that tells you the directory the folder you're currently in so in my case I'm in the home folder in the Oliver folder and below that in the test folder which I've prepared for this video <coughs> I'll probably make a video later to explain um, these file paths more in more detail, but um, for now we'll just accept it as a, as a path and are fine with that. So, um, well, to see which elements or files and folders I find in this in this directory I'm currently in, you can use the ls command. That shows us now that there are several files inside this uh, directory and even a folder um, yeah and so what if I want to see the contents of let's say file 2 then there is another command called cat I think that's not because of the animal cat but <laughs> because uh, it comes from catalog so that's maybe not very intuitive but um, cat is the command to print the contents of a file so we can say cat file2 and then we get the contents that are inside file2 so file2 as we see is a file that just contains the word content2 let's say uh, or let's let's have a look at um, the file called large file. By the way, um, usually a Linux system system nowadays or the, the terminal windows nowadays supports something called autocompletion. When you are, um, are typing and you don't want to type the entire word that you're that you would have to type, you can try to press the tab key and it will auto complete um, the file name or whatever it is at that point. Doesn't always work, but usually today it's you can rely on that um, very much. So, okay, let's print now the contents of a large file. So, now we see there's a lot of well, always the same stuff there, but uh, I prepared this file to show you a file that contains more than one, just one word. Okay, so um, sometimes you get the problem that the file is even larger than, larger than this one, like when you are looking into log files or when something on your system is going wrong or something and you want to find out wh wh what the reason is, then often you have log files that are I don't know, megabytes or hundreds of megabytes even um, in size and then this cat is not very convenient, this cat command. 
because uh, it scrolls over and over and you won't be able to see very much all the rele relevant parts of that. Um, so for that there's another command called less and we can also give it um, the file name of the large file and then we see we are now in some kind of um, special mode here which is basically what the less command does and now with the cursor keys you can scroll up and down through this, through this file and have a look in detail and it tells you when you're in the end at the end or yeah and you can also use the page up and down keys to scroll a bit faster than that that turns out to be convenient um, when looking at files now you can exit this this uh, less mode by pressing the Q key and then we're back as we see where we were before okay so that's that for files, the first introduction to files now what we see here is a folder actually we don't really know it's a folder apart from the fact that the color is slightly different but that's not always the case that it's uh, a different f uh, color depends on, on the terminal you're in and another thing is the name is arbitrary or it could be or could be arbitrary because I just called it or folder one so that's uh, obvious it's a folder however you can find out for sure if it's really a folder um, by passing a command line option to the ls command so command line options start with a dash usually and then some kind of letter or something that's different for every command so the ls command supports the command line option l which means long listing let's try that okay so now we see not only the names of the elements that we find in this directory but also um, some more information like for example the date and time of um, the previous modification of the contents of uh, this element um, the size in bytes the user that the file belongs to and the group the second name is the group which is um, the same here like the username and well this is I think the hard links but that, that that's too maybe too much for now and some file system permissions but we'll go into that um, in a later part of this tutorial so let's just ignore it for now well one thing that's interesting for us right now is the f very first letter here there we see for folder one we have a D here, um, which means is that it's a directory. So, a direc directory is, of course, something you can move into, like the one we're currently in, as we've learned in the beginning. And um, so, let's move into that, into that other folder, or into folder one. We can do that with the cd command, which means change directory. And um, yeah, then once again we've um, to put the folder name there, press enter and now you see, or we can see by um, issuing pwd command again that our current folder has now changed we're now inside that folder 1 we can once, ad once again do this ls command and we see the files that are now in this folder once again file 3, file 4, we can print the contents of file 4 for example by using cat yeah and you can also of course use less for a file that doesn't have much content and pressing Q key again gets us out of here okay so um, that's it for navigation or maybe one more thing um, you also need of course to to um, move out of this folder again 
Um, you can do that by CD and printing or, or typing two points there. So that two point thing is always a, um, a is always meaning that that you m always refers to the directory above the one you're currently in. Once more, we can see that. Um, well, here I, I now um, add another command line switch to the ls command, which is the a here, and the a means all. We'll see what implications this has. Okay, now suddenly we see more than the the files we've seen before, like for example the two points here um, or the two dots. Um, these are always there, and as I said, they refer to the directory level, which is above the one you're currently in. The single dot here refers to the very same directory level you're in. So, um, yeah, and another thing is when file names start with a with a dot, then it means they're hidden. That's why the the normal ls doesn't show it because uh, um, file names starting with a dot are considered to be hidden hidden files. But we can simply show them by adding the a flag to um, the ls command. <coughs> so this means I go to folder 1, I say ls with the a flag, and then I see, okay, here's uh, the, the double dot um, entry, or it's considered a folder, and that's why I can cd back to it. You can also say, uh, well, to list the files of a, of a folder you don't have to be really inside that folder. You can list contents of folders that you're not in currently by just specifying them on the ls command line. Like this. So now you see we're in the test folder we are currently in this folder containing these contents, but you can list the contents of folder 1 by just telling ls that you don't want to see the contents of the current file you're in, uh, current directory you're in, but the one of, uh, but, but uh, the contents of folder 1. <coughs> okay, so now um, Let's create a file. We can do that easily by, well, let's move into folder one. So it's, um, yeah, and you can use the touch command to touch, let's say, file five. Now we see there's a new file. We've created it by, by touching it. Um, but touching a file does not put any content into that file. It just creates the file. So we can look into file 5 and see there's nothing inside it. You can put stuff into it. Well, either, either you, the, the most common way nowadays is using an uh, editor like Vim, for example, but that's maybe a bit too complicated right now, so we're just sticking to command line stuff here. And I can say, okay, I want to echo some arbitrary string into file 5. Now what has happened? We see file 5 now has a size of 3 bytes. And really now, there it is. The reason it's uh, 3 bytes and not 2 is because there's a new line right after after the second A here. So that's three characters in total, including the new line 
character, which, which is called a special character. Um, okay, so maybe one more thing about this echo stuff here, because we used quite some or uh, several features right here. Um, first thing is the echo command, which is simply saying print. So I can do uh, okay, I can echo anything, and it usually just prints that very value to the terminal. And what I s what I used here is um, called file redirection. And that is available to that. That's not the feature of of the echo command spec specifically, but it's a feature, a general feature of the terminal. You can, for example, say cat, and now the or let's say uh, no, for clarity. Let's start with this. So now we print the contents of file 3, the content 3 ins inside there, print the files of file 5, which we've created. That's the double A, double A in there. And now we can say print the content of file 3, but don't print it here in my terminal, but redirect the output to file 5. Now, as you've seen, we don't see the contents of file 3 here in the terminal, but we've redirected it. We can check this. Now, the first indication of that we've written something into file 5 is that it's not 3 bytes in size anymore, but 5 bytes, uh, uh, 9 bytes. And we can now print file 5, and what we see, it, it got overwritten by the contents of file 3. So when you're using this um, file redirection here, the contents in this file that you put here get overwritten. So be maybe you want to be careful with this statement because um, the contents you've in you've had before in that file get lost. You can or or there is a var variation of that. When you're using twice the greater sign here, twice in a row, then um, it, append, it appends the content to file five, to the present content in file five. So we can say, okay, cut the contents of file three and append it to file five, and now cut the contents of file four and append it to file five. And when we list, we can see, oh, now it's 3 times 9, 27 bytes in size. And when we have, when we look at it, yeah, we see our first uh, um, cat was this one here. The second line comes from this one. And the third line comes from this command here. Okay, so that's, I think, now we've even covered um, output redirection and now let's see how we can remove files. For that we have the rm remove command and we can say remove file 5. Uh, it silently does this and now we list the contents of our directory and we see file 5 is gone. So one more time you've got to be careful about this um, because you've seen it, it doesn't ask you whether you really want to do this. It's it's just doing what you tell it to. So um, it's assuming you know what you're doing. And when you accid accidentally r remove a file, you may be into real trouble because it's uh, nowhere in, in, in some kind of trash can or it's really gone. And you've had to. Well, there are of course uh, some rescue methods, but but that's nothing you want to do. It's not as easy as getting a thing out of the trash can again and putting it where it was. You have to dig into the file system then, and when you're lucky, you can recover the file. 
Um, okay, but that's maybe too much for now. Um, okay, so the rm command is how to remove files. Now, uh, one more thing is how to create folders. And for that we have the mkdir, which means make directory. And we say new folder. Now we list our directory and we see, oh, there's a new folder. It's a folder because we see this D here. And now we can change directory into that folder and see it's empty just like we would expect because we just created it. We can now create a new file and there we are. Okay, we can now go back one level, make a back up one level. We c there's another command for removing a directory which is called rmdir, rmdir for remove directory, but as we'll see it can only remove empty directories. So now we, here we see our first error message. We've tried to remove new folder, but it tells us, no, I can't remove it because it's not empty. So um, we can go back, remove new file one, or yeah, new file one new file 2. As you can see you can <coughs> you cannot only, well it depends on the command always but for most of these basic commands you can um, not only tell it one thing it operates on but two or not only two, you can tell it even more files than that uh, almost as many as you like and it will do like this Okay, it, obviously it's gone right because we didn't get an error message and when we list our contents we can see that new file 1 and 2 are gone. So then we go back up one level and now try our rmdir again, new folder, and now it doesn't complain and as we've seen it has removed new folder. I think that's it for now.